Hi there. So for this example now, we'll do it a bit more in a handwritten format. And what we're going to do, as I'm showing here on the screen, is we're going to determine the occupant load for an apartment building. And specifically, we're going to determine the occupant load for the sixth story of this apartment building. What's special about this sixth story is that it contains a bunch of uh, suites within it, right? There are a bunch of apartments within this apartment building. And specifically, what we have on the sixth story is that we have one one bedroom apartment, four two bedroom apartments, and we have two three bedroom apartments. Okay, so all of these again on the sixth story. So we want to find the occupant load for the sixth story. And remember, the occupant load is the correct building code terminology to ask for the number of people expected in that space. Now, if you remember, there are two ingredients to correctly determine the occupant load for any space. They are the major occupancy for that space and the floor area of that space. Okay. So for this example, we're going to do both of these items. We're going to start first with the major occupancy. And if you remember from topic two, Okay, the major occupancy for an apartment building is C, which is residential. And where did I get this from? Let me see if I can share this with you. So I got this from uh, Appendix A. And you know how to get the proper uh, reference for this by looking at a, a topic two. And if you can see it, apartments is right here. Can you see it right there? Apartments under group C. So now that we know what the major occupancy is uh, for this, that tells us the important information that we can use in Table 3.1.17.1 to determine the appropriate factor. So let's go to Table 3.1.17.1 to find the appropriate factor. Here we are. So we can see in Table 3.1.17.1, all of these items here are in order of major occupancy, right? So residential, which is the one that I have at the top right now, has two entries. One is for dwelling units, which is the one that we're looking for, and the other one is for dormitories. We're not looking at dormitories, we're looking at dwelling units. And if you notice, the occupant load factor for it says C clause 1B. So that's what we have to do. We go to clause 1B, which is right here. And what this says in very simple terms is that one bedroom equals two people. That's it. So again, what that says is that there isn't really a factor to be used. And instead, because it points to clause 1B, what it's saying is that one bedroom equals two people. So the trick when it comes to apartments is that we have to calculate the number of bedrooms and then multiply it by two to get the number of people. You know what else this means? It also means that we don't need a floor area when it comes to apartments because it has nothing to do with the area of the space and it only has to do with the number of bedrooms. So that's the thing. Calculate the number of bedrooms. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out the number of bedrooms and we're going to get that from this information right here. One, one bedroom apartment. So that's equal to one bedroom. Then we also have four two bedroom apartments, eight bedrooms. And lastly, we have two three bedroom apartments. What does that mean? Six bedrooms. So we're going to add these all up. It's going to be 15 bedrooms. And then to find the occupant load, what we do is use this one bedroom equals to two people. So we come here and we multiply the number of bedroom by two people per bedroom. 
15 bedrooms times two people per bedroom equals to 30 people. And that's it. We have our final answer. There are four. The occupant load is 30 people. And then I make my final answer obvious and unmistakable. Okay, let's do another example. In this next example, we will try to determine the occupant load, so that is the number of people that are expected to be on the fourth story of this supermarket building. And if you remember, the two ingredients we require to determine the occupant load are the major occupancy of that space and the floor area of that space. So let's start with the major occupancy. If you remember major occupancy, we covered that in topic two. So make sure you go review that. But I'll show you exactly where I get the information that tells me that a supermarket is an E occupancy, which is mercantile. I'm here in Appendix A again, and I look through all of them and under Group E, which is mercantile, I find supermarkets right there. So that tells me it's an E occupancy mercantile. So then this tells us all the information we need at this point, then to go to table 3.1.17.1 to find the appropriate factor. So let's do that. Let's go to this table. We find it right here. And if we scroll down to the mercantile occupancy, you see it right here. Okay. We're offered with a number of choices here. And if you notice, the choices depend on the story that is specific to that building and whether or not it serves food. So in our case, if you remember, we're looking at the fourth story of this supermarket building. So out of all those choices, the most appropriate one is other stories, which then gives us an appropriate load factor of 5.60 meters squared per person. So again, for other stories, right, which we got because it's a mercantile occupancy, we get a factor of 5.60 meters squared per person. Now, what we need at this point then, now that we have the major occupancy, is to find what the floor area is for this space. And we are told that the floor area for this space is 500 meters squared. That's for the fourth story of the supermarket. So we're going to take these two values and divide them by each other as such. So we take the area, 500 meters squared. We divide that by the factor, 5.60 meters squared per person. And this gives us the number of people. So 500 divided by 5.6 equals 2. 89.29 uh, people. Great. Are we done? No. Remember, people are whole numbers. Human beings are whole numbers. So 89.29 is not a number of people because we don't have fraction of humans. Instead, we always round up. So what this means is that we actually need 90 people because 89.29 is actually more than 89. And the only whole number, the smallest whole number that's bigger than 89 is 90. Okay, so that's our number right now. And we can wrap up this question. Therefore, the occupant load is 90 people. And then I make my final answer obvious and unmistakable. Okay. That's it. I hope that helps. Take care, be well, and have a lovely day.